it's Liz Thompson um, at Sew with Liz. Just before we go to the machine, I want to show you my big Rubbermaid tub with all my scraps of fruit and vegetable fabric and other lovely fabrics that go with those. Just so that you know, I got plenty stash to use up. So I'm going to show you, let's get that out of the way. I'm going to show you today some uh, an, another way of using up your stash. And so I just want to check that you can see the camera. Um, right, what we have here is a piece of batting. And I could have done it a lot smaller, but I've, I had a piece of batting this size. So I thought, well, what the heck? We'll do a quilt as you go project this size. Um, and uh, if I get my ruler, we're looking at probably about 14 inches by about 15 inches. 15 or 16 inches so it's not quite square but it's it's good because we will um, trim it later now uh, before we get going on that project I want to show you more or less the direction that we are heading in or could be heading in because there are many many variations on this particular quilt as you go project so there is one this is my lovely apple uh, granny smith apple uh, fruit fabric and then I used a green and a yellow fabric um, that I received as a prize. These are uh, Jane Sassaman prints and I received it at a prize at a Quilt Canada one year. Okay so what we're going to do is show you how you are piecing and quilting at the same time. If you are familiar with this technique it is a flip and press technique. So obviously the back of the um, block that I've made has got stitching with this red fabric. Okay, then I have another one, which is very similar, just a slightly larger size. And on this, on the back here, I have this uh, stripey fabric. And so the idea is that when you are doing these uh, blocks, you would have in your bobbin, the thread you would have in your bobbin would be the thread to match the back of your block, the fabric you're using on the back of your block. All right, so here I used a dark green, bottle green thread in my bobbin. And here is another um, quilt as you go block where I have plums and apples and pears around the edge. Now I'm not going to go through all these blocks, but suffice to say, I've been working on these for a long time, steadily working through my stash of fruit fabrics. And ultimately, I will then join them all together and I will have a rather lovely quilt. Not altogether sure if I want fruit in my bedroom. So it may end up being a lovely uh, throw for um, the lounge in the winter months when it's a bit chilly. Um, I, I, I don't know yet, but I'm using up my stash as we go. Here is another option. Instead of doing those uh, central block and then building up your block around the central uh, block, you could just use strips. So if you have lots of strips over from things like your binding, your sashing, your borders, this is an ideal opportunity to use up those little strips of um, fabric. And what you will do is you will start in the middle and then let me just get another piece of fabric to show you how you would proceed with something like this. You would lay your next strip, which obviously would be longer. So let me see if I can actually find a longer piece so that you can get the real idea. Okay, so I have this fabric here and it's longer. So I am going to lay it across the edge of my orange fruit fabric. And then I am going to stitch a quarter of an inch all the way down that seam. Now I'm not actually going to do that because this block is actually finished. But when that's done, you're going to flip it over and press at your iron all the way along that strip. And then you're ready to add another one until you get to the corner of the block. Obviously, you're going to have rough edges all the way around your block. Not a problem. You'll just trim that at your cutting mat. And so here we go. Here is another one using up scraps of lime green and orange and yellow fruit fabric. And here's another one with just a mishmash, some melons, some apples, some lemons, all sorts of different fruit fabrics on that strip idea. 
Then I had some little blocks left, little scrappy bits. So this happens to be the, my orange fruit fabric. So I got out some yellow fabric and, uh, and this orange batik, and I made a bunch of different little small blocks. And these would make absolutely ideal mug rugs or coasters. And there is one that has actually been finished. And I will show you in another video how to do this yarn couching edge around the edge of your mug rugs. I particularly like this edge because um, if you have a wine glass or a coffee mug and you rest it on the edge of a mug rug, if you have binding there, it makes quite a thick lip with your binding. And um, I've had people in my house knock over a cup of coffee. And, you know, it's not the end of the world, but they get embarrassed. So let's save your guests embarrassment and do the yarn couching method around the edges of your mug rugs. It doesn't take long and it uses up your yarn in your stash as well. All right. So here we go. I could have taken this and laid it in the middle, you know, vertically and horizontally, but I've decided I'm going to do it at an angle. It's not a perfect square. I don't mind that. It's just a scrap of my apple fabric. And now I am going to come by with, uh, let's see, which, let's do this. It's my green apple fabric. And I'm going to put it right side down on top of it. I have my machine threaded up with, um, black thread in the bobbin because underneath as my backing fabric I have got some apple print fruit fabric fruit print fabric and so a black bobbin thread will go well with that and in my needle I have got a medium gray uh, thread um, because I think that kind of works well and it happens to be an aurifil thread I have long been a fan of aurifil thread and so now I am riding the right hand side of the foot all the way along the edge of that fabric. And when I get to the end of it, I can lift my presser foot up and cut my fabric. And then I am going to do exactly the same thing on the other side of this central red apple fabric. Whoops, just knocked my presser foot off. And let's put my presser foot down and away we go for the second side. Now I'd love to flip the camera and show you what I'm doing at the ironing board. But you know what? I really don't want to make you seasick. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn around because I have my ironing station just at my left elbow. And I am going to flip those two pieces of fabric and give them a very quick press with my new little mini iron. So now I have my two fabrics and I have two strips. Now, do I need to cut this fabric off all of these corners where it overshot this fabric? No, I don't need to. You can, yes you can if you wish, but you really don't need to. So now we're going to come by and on the other raw edge, we are going to come and I'm putting this lime green fabric here which I actually bought at House of Stitches in Humboldt, Saskatchewan when I was there one year for, um, can't remember now whether it was an open house or the Stitches Conference, which they hold once a year. But anyway, either way, they were having a sale and I bought a whole whack load of fabric and uh, I have had a lot of joy from these particular bright prints of fabric. And then I am going to come and put the other one down on the other side of my center apple fabric and do exactly the same thing. Now, this is really, really easy. I think all of you will agree that if you can do a quarter inch seam and you can cut your fabrics into strips and they don't all have to be the same width of strips, they can be all different widths that gives interest and variety to uh, your project. All right, if you want to, you can stop and trim the little threads on the back. And of course, with all my moving my fabric around, my needle became unthreaded, but no problem because I have a needle threader on this machine. All right, 
So once again, I'm going to go to the iron and I am going to press, but this time I am going to take my big scissors and cut off those end bits that were sticking out beyond what I needed because I could possibly use those bits for something else. So let me just quickly iron these two strips open and away we go again. All right, so now I am going to get this fabric here, which is a rather nice orangey red fabric. And I am going to put the presser foot down and once again, I'm going to do a quarter inch seam all the way along. Do you see that one was a little longer than what I needed, but that doesn't matter. And if I think that I could use this piece of fabric for something else, no problem, just chop it off and put it in your big um, scrap box. All right, I tend to keep my scraps sort of organized, <laughs> not totally organized, but um, I, I kind of keep them where I, you know, I don't have to spend three hours looking for fabric. So here we are. I have another piece of this red print fabric with looks like little crosses and plus signs on it. And once again, just lay it down and we are going to flip and press after I've done this quarter inch seam again. And do you know something? The really good thing with this is that if my seams are not 100% accurate, have you in the past done piecing on a block for a quilt and then you come to measure the block once it's finished? And oh dear me, that block is too small. For example, maybe the finished size of the block should have been 12 and a half inches. All right. And you end up with 11 and three quarters or 12 and a quarter. Well, let me tell you, you're in good company because that has happened to me <laughs> many times. I am a quick stick sewer and I tend to uh, get through, I'm very productive, I get through a lot, but sometimes the accuracy of my quarter inch suffers a little in the process. And if your quarter inch seams are not perfect, or as many quilters talk about, a scant quarter inch. Now, that's one of my pet peeves actually about the scant quarter inch, because to my way of thinking, it is either a quarter of an inch or it's not. So a scant quarter inch is actually not a quarter of an inch. It's less than a quarter of an inch. And so, you know, I'd rather that, that people called it what it is. In any event, I tend not to do scant quarter inches. I tend to be, because of the speed of my sewing, I tend to maybe be a little overzealous and my seams are maybe a little teeny bit more than a quarter of an inch. But do you know something? At the end of the day, if you use the same thread and the same foot for your project from start to finish, even if your seams are not exactly a quarter of an inch, it doesn't really matter. It's the consistency that we're looking for. So let me just go back to the ironing board and once again, press these out. And uh, while I'm doing that, I will tell you that um, if you are doing this project that we are actually doing today, it doesn't really matter if your seams are not exact a quarter of an inch, because what we're doing is we're just continuing until we have all or nearly all of our batting covered up. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along with a piece of the fabric that is on the back of this quilt. Let me try and see, whoops, let's just pop that under there and put the presser foot down. I just want to find a piece that is long enough. Yep, these will be plenty long enough. So once again, here we go, another strip. And if you are kind of saying, well, you know, I've seen this, then you can just fast forward the video 
um, to see how we end it off once the whole block is filled. If you are not so sure and you've never seen this technique before, now is a good opportunity just to kind of do some repeat watching so that the whole idea of the project gets reinforced in your mind and you don't have to be watching the video while you make the project because you've seen it done over and over in this particular video. So let's get another piece of the apple fabric for the other side and we will put it there. We only have a couple more rounds to do and uh, then we will have covered that batting on the corners. All right, so let's continue down here. And I know that I didn't do a quarter, perfect quarter inch there. I went a little wide, but you know what? It doesn't matter. If you're a perfectionist, it may matter to you. In which case then you can float your boat and you can go and unpick that. Be my guest. I very seldom will do that um, because quite frankly, nobody is even going to notice. All right, so let's come over here and we will pick this nice, uh, let's just see, if we, yep, we have enough. We're probably starting to go over the edge of the batting and the backing fabric now. But that's okay because we still need to cover the corners and then we will trim off those little pieces so that begs the question what do we do with all those very tiny little pieces of fabric that we trim off the corners at a later point well i used to if they were really small i did not keep them okay there comes a time if you start keeping very tiny bits of fabric honest to goodness you're going to get overwhelmed with fabric and you're not even going to know where all your fabric is. Um, I find every now and again, I'm sorting out things and looking for something that I know I have, but can't remember where I put, and I'll come across something. And you know what? I can't remember why I bought it. I bought it so long ago and it got lost amongst my stuff. And I don't really know anymore why I have it. So um, when it comes to keeping very tiny pieces of fabric, I really don't do that. Uh, once they get to a small size, so for example, if I was to trim this off here, flush with the edge, and then a little piece of apple fabric also being cut off, these two little bits of fabric, they go in a paper bag, a large paper bag, on the floor under my table, my sewing table. And those pieces get collected in that paper bag, and when there's enough of them and threads go in there too, little scraps of batting, all those sorts of things. When those are done uh, and the bag is full, what I then do is I have little pillows made with uh, some fabric. Um, it doesn't matter what fabric it is, maybe just something that you had on hand and you haven't used. Um, it could be white, it could be cream, it could be red, it doesn't really matter. And you are then going to make yourself a little pillow, an empty pillow or cushion. And then you will stuff that cushion with all those little bits of fabric. And you know what has periodically also gone into those uh, that bag under my table is when I have um, maybe worn a dress or a skirt or um, generally softish things, not not like denims. And um, you know what? It's come to the end of its life, and it's uh, really a little too tatty to take to the thrift store. What I then do is I put that article of clothing, or maybe it's a dishcloth that I've used in the kitchen and it got a little bit stained and it's been washed and washed and washed and quite frankly I don't really want to use it anymore. So what I'll do is I will put that article of clothing or a dishcloth, whatever it is, onto my cutting table and I'll get out my big 60 millimeter uh, rotary cutter, this one here, all right, with a nice big blade and I literally slice through that uh, article over and over until it's chopped up 
into lots of little pieces because if I didn't do that and pop it in that bag underneath my table then you know what would happen is that that art article would end up in the landfill and if I was cheeky and I took it to the thrift store then you know what they would simply dispose of it in the garbage and uh, that costs them money because they have so much stuff that comes into the thrift stores that really is not usable and so then they actually have to pay to get that taken away and so in a sense I am saving the poor thrift store from having to do that and then those pillows get sealed I usually hand sew them closed and I don't make them so full of stuff that they're as hard as a rock um, but I make them so that they're comfortable um, but not too soft and lumpy and then I give them to a friend of mine um, I'm in Vancouver BC and a friend of mine lives in Chilliwack and uh, her and a bunch of her friends have a charity they, where they collect them and I believe also one of the quilting guilds I believe it's Fraser Valley Quilters Guild um, are involved in this charity and so people collect all their little quilting scraps and make pillows and those end up at um, shelters for the homeless so if they don't have a pillow they can uh, get one of these pillows all right so I've gone right to the edge on that corner I think I possibly only need one more piece over here to cover that corner so there we go let's put it down to there and take it out and trim my threads and I'm just going to cut some of these ends off because I'm running out of fabric for the corners and there we go and just iron these that I have just done so we now have three corners covered actually we only have this corner left to cover that's all that's left so I'm going to choose do you see this one's quite a lot wider than the strips I've been using up till now but that's okay and I can bring it down further because that other piece of fabric is already sticking out and let's position this a little better I did actually have my quilting table on this um, machine so that because I thought well you know this is going to get quite big and I thought the quilting table would help but it's a clear plastic and oh my goodness the light was shining on that clear plastic and blinding in the video so I had to go to a plan B and not use my quilting table all right so there we have our block and I'm now just going to push my machine out of the way and my scissors out of the way and I am going to get my rotary cutter and my ruler and this time because it's really hard to see exactly where my block is so I'm going to hopefully you can see most of it all right so I am actually going to turn it over because then I can see where the backing fabric was and I can then better guess where my edges are and what needs to be trimmed there's lots of threads here to trim as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down this one side and literally chop and so all those little bits of fabric are what goes in that um, paper bag under my table why is it a paper bag well because it's just easier it was a paper bag I got from a restaurant with a takeaway and it's nice and big and it's not plastic so more scraps there and then this had a little bit of a salvage on the fabric so I'm going to make sure that I cut that salvage off because we don't want that sticking out on the back so I don't know about you but I normally line my ruler up at the bottom here on a cut edge of fabric a previously cut edge and then I simply cut through and then here I come again and I am going to trim that last edge actually this could do with another little bit of a trim here one piece of fabric evaded me all right so that is the back of my uh, quilt as you go piece 
and that is the front. Now that is fairly large. I think it is plenty, plenty large for a placemat. It could also be a cushion cover. I think that would make a lovely cushion cover for um, your outdoor furniture. I know we're not really thinking outdoor furniture at the moment. As soon as it stops raining here, it's terribly gray and rainy here in Vancouver today. And I'm actually going away next week for um, almost a month. So it has to be done before I leave. And uh, one of the jobs that I've got to do is go and pack away all my garden chairs, um, patio chairs, and uh, get rid of all my tomato plants, which are almost dead, and so on, and do a bit of a clean up on my patio, because by the time I come home, it's going to be well almost into winter. All right, so here you are. That you can now use for anything that um, makes your heart warm and happy. And if you wanted to, you could make all sorts of different blocks and join them together and have a real scrappy quilt. Um, what I can do in another video is show you how I join the edges uh, of blocks together. And I can perhaps in that video as well show how to, not perhaps, I will do it. I will show how to do that yarn couching along the edge. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could use a binding around this edge. If it was going to be a placement, I think I'd be inclined to use a, you know, regular traditional quilt binding because a placemat is something that's going to probably be washed and used quite frequently and so you want something strong on the sides. Okay so I do hope that that was very uh, was fun for you and that you learned something and that you learned a way to use up your stash. Um, and that way we can start to breathe and find the things that we can't find because our stash is so big. If you're at all like me, that's that's kind of what it is in my house. Um, just to mention briefly before I let you go, is that there are other videos on other stash busting projects. So if you like this, you probably will like some of the other projects um, that you will find on my YouTube channel. Um, I also have a blog where um, I, I don't do exactly the same content as what I do on these videos, but sometimes I will explain step by step on the blog because some people prefer written instructions and uh, photographs rather than a video that they've got to stop and start as they are sewing. So I do have some things on my blog as well, and that is uh, Sew and Quilt with Liz Thompson. Well, actually, I think it's just Sew and Quilt with Liz at sorry not at dot wordpress.com those links will be below this uh, video um, on youtube and then i also have a website www.sewwithliz.com two w's in the middle and that has got uh, fabric thread uh, magazines books and uh, classes uh, for sale and you're most welcome to go we currently have a special on thread for the fall. Okay, hope you enjoyed this. See you again soon.